Hello students. I hope you're enjoying this study as much as I have been teaching it uh, this time around again. This has been a time that uh, I have been getting a fresh perspective on some of these passages in Romans. It's just amazing no matter how many times I have studied this book, I continue to get something new out of it. And I've, that's happened this past week, and I want to share some thoughts with you this today um, as a result of my own personal study. But first, I'd like to do a little bit of a review. The first week, we saw that the subject of Romans, of Paul's letter to the Romans, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and how Paul identified it as the power of God to save those who believe. He goes on briefly to explain what it is about the gospel that makes it so powerful, and it's because of what it reveals about God, namely his righteousness. And that's as much as Paul says there in the first chapter. He's later going to unfold that thought more for us at the end of the third chapter, exactly what this righteousness of God is that the gospel reveals. But first he's going to now explain what it is that the gospel saves us from. And that is the judgment of God. The problem that everyone in the world faces and must deal with is God himself. God is a problem to many people. And it's because of how God feels about sin, about all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of mankind. And Paul makes that very clear as he unfolds the reason for God's judgment against mankind. And he does it by speaking of three different groups of people that are identified in three different ways. First of all, in chapter one, he identifies uh, what we would call uh, the base group, the, the, the universal group that includes all of mankind, but particularly those who suppress the truth by their sin and by their wickedness. And they do that because of the way that they have not honored God. That when they knew God, these who suppressed the truth by all of their wickedness and sin, that when they knew God through his creation, the things that reveal his glorious nature, they did not glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful, but turned his glory into shame. The second group that Paul identifies, he actually addresses in the second person. Wherefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge others. For when you judge, uh, judge another, you condemn yourself because the very things you judge others for, you're guilty of the same thing. And do you think you are gonna escape the judgment of God, he says, he writes. The third group, he identifies uh, the Jews. He names them by name. <laughs> Wherefore, thou art called a Jew, and make your boast, and rest in the law, he says. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? You teach these things, but do you practice them? And so we, he comes to a grand conclusion at the end, of the third chapter that all are guilty. There is none righteous, no, not one. He proves his point that everyone is in need of the gospel. Everyone has this problem with God facing his judgment. But the good news is there's an answer for our problem. What I have appreciated about this past week's study with you 
is it helps us to know and be aware of the different kinds of people out there that may cross our paths where we have an opportunity to share the gospel. That we have to, we need to adjust our message to our audience. And I love the way that the book of Acts records how the Apostle Paul himself does this, how he was aware, always aware of his audience and adjusted his message to personalize his message to his audience. Whenever he went to a new town or city, it says that he first went into the synagogues to share the gospel with the Jews because the gospel is first for the Jew and then to the Gentile. And because he was aware that they already had a knowledge of God through the, their covenant relationship with God, the problem of the Jews was they truly made their boast in the law. They thought that the law was all they needed to ensure them eternal life and inheritance in the kingdom of God. They didn't realize, though, that they needed to hear the good news of the gospel. They needed to know that no one could be justified by the works of the law. They needed to know this: who this one was, who had God had sent to them, and yet who they rejected and crucified. They needed to know and be convinced he was truly the Christ, the Son of God. And Paul would show them by the scriptures and prove to them that this is exactly who Jesus was. But then we find in Acts 17, Paul's audience is entirely different. He's speaking to Gentiles, to the Greeks. They are in Athens on Mars Hill. Those who never heard of Jesus Christ, who know nothing about the promise of a Messiah in the scriptures. People who, though they may be unaware of a God who they really didn't know, they worship other gods too. And Paul presented to them the truth concerning the one true God, causing them to know that this one who created all things, who made of one blood all nations and determined their dwelling places, that he had determined a day in which he would judge the world by this one man. And he doesn't name him who we know is Jesus, but he identifies him by the name man and by being the one whom God has ordained to judge the world. You see, he presented to them, first of all, the idea of this God whom they ignorantly worshiped, who didn't really know how to worship him, and then presented them the main important idea of God's judgment that they were facing a day in which they would give an account for all the things they did in their body. And they needed to know that there was a man named Jesus who could save them from that judgment. So Paul used that day to plant that seed of truth. And what an example that is for us as we share the gospel with different people that God brings across our path to be aware or at least find out where they're at, where, where uh, they are in their faith and in their belief. But I'd like to share one more thing that, uh, that we can gain from our study besides uh, learning to be more aware and sensitive to our audience. And that is this, what about us? Where do we find ourselves in this passage of scripture? Do we believe everything that Paul has written here concerning God's judgment? And just because we may profess already to know Jesus Christ, that we shall escape that day in which God will judge our deeds, the things that we know. Have we acknowledged to God where we have fallen short? Can you identify with any of these three groups yourself? because we're not excluded either. And I have had a fresh conviction as I have studied with you this week that 
I can find myself in all three groups. As I recall, as I examine my heart and, and ask myself, do I truly honor and glorify God the way that he deserves to be honored, the way he deserves to be worshiped? Do I do that? Do I acknowledge him every day the way I need to acknowledge him? When they knew God, it says they wouldn't, they did not glorify him as God, neither were they thankful. What about me? I have to acknowledge, I have not expressed my gratitude to God enough as I should. I should be praising him and worshiping and glorifying him every day of my life. I have truly failed in that area. And what about judging people? There's hardly a day I get on the freeway and I'm not judging someone for cutting me off, <laughs> amongst other things. And yet I'm guilty of the very same, doing the same things to others. You know, do I, sure, should I think that I'm going to escape? God's are giving the count for that before God. And I have to be careful about making my boast of being raised in a Christian home and, and resting in all the things that I've learned as a child growing up just knowing about God, resting in that knowledge that I have will not be enough in that day to excuse me from God's judgment. Yes, I have, I can easily identify, just as Paul, by the way, identified himself in the third chapter where he says, we Jews. Yes, Paul knew and understood his own need for the gospel. And he also knew the power of that gospel that rescued him from his ignorance with his darkness to bring him out into the light and know and accept Jesus Christ as his savior. And I'm so thankful that God indeed has an answer to our problem that we've all had with God and coming short, that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I, I truly hope that you are able to internalize this message yourself, apply it to your own lives before you're able to speak it to brothers. As Paul said to the Corinthians, I have believed and therefore I have spoken. Maybe truly make sure we believe all of this word and how it applies to us and in order that we may speak it effectively to others in a way that will bring conviction to their hearts and cause them to see their need for the gospel. May God bless you as you continue your, this great study.